We are here at Fruit Street Soccer Fields in Hopkinton to talk with Hopkinton Middle School teacher Evren Gundes about his childhood, his mentors, his work as teacher, leadership facilitator, and soccer coach. And we'll even ask him to teach me a non-athlete, a bona fide soccer move. Hi Evren, thank you for meeting with me today. We're here at the Fruit Street Soccer Fields and it's a beautiful day out here and I understand that you recommend it being here and just wondering if you could tell a little bit why here in the middle of a soccer field today. Absolutely, it's a pleasure being here. Thanks for having me. I, I think that this new complex here in Hopkinton is just a beautiful place and as the varsity girls soccer coach in town and and very involved in athletics. I'm just so thankful to have this space and we love coming out here and mm -hmm. getting the chance to use it. And it's just a, a really, uh, it's, a, it's, we're really, it's a real privilege to be able to, to have this complex and, and it represents a lot for our soccer program. Mm, yeah, yeah. Good choice and it is. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful here today. Yes, and uh, so you have been a varsity uh, soccer coach for the girls uh, at the high school. And uh, how many years have you been doing that work? I just finished my third year this past year, so mm -hmm. I've done it three heading into our fourth season. Ah, well, uh, congratulations Thank you. And, and good work Thank uh, you. with that. Yes, uh, and does uh, when does that start up again for you? That will be fall through? Yeah, mm -hmm. so the tryouts, first day of tryouts is August 22nd. Mm -hmm. And okay. I think the first game of the season is right after Labor Day, mm -hmm. the first or second day of school. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, a quick, go through tryouts, have a short preseason, and then we start with our schedule right away in the fall. Yeah. Wow. A lot of summer prep work though. It's kind of already started for the coaches. We get together a lot and we're planning on how we're gonna organize tryouts and things like that. So uh -huh. it's an all the time job and I love it. Wow, uh-huh, yeah, it does Wouldn't want like it any awesome. other way. Uh-huh, well, that's good to hear. And important, I think, to think of uh, your role in being a coach and teacher in mm. that way. And, um, so soccer, where does that come from? Do you have roots in playing soccer from childhood? I do. Oh man, so I grew up in a soccer family. Uh -huh. My dad is, was originally born in Turkey and he came over and he has this just European attitude on soccer, the, the world's most beautiful game. And he came over mm -hmm. here when he was the age of 13 and he played all growing up and in high school and college. And then when he had his family, he had three boys, and I have two older brothers, and all of us got really into soccer. So I was playing youth soccer from when I could walk, and it's just been an ongoing love in my life and a passion for me, both uh, as a player and also as a fan. Wow. In our house growing up, soccer was on TV all the time, and it still is. Wow. And so we would sit around and watch that over NFL games a lot of times, and I just mm -hmm. think it's a beautiful, beautiful sport, and the purest game in the world. Wow. Well, so uh, it's just a, something that's always been a part of my life. Uh -huh. Well, that sounds like true loyalty yeah. and, and good roots. Very good roots. So, um, all right, so there are your roots and uh, where did you grow up in, in having this, uh, this orientation in soccer with your family and uh, where did you get started? It's right down the street in a little town called Hopedale, Mass. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, graduated with a very small class, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. Not anything like what they have in Hopkinton here, but I graduated with 68 kids oh, in my high school uh -huh, class. And yeah. it was a very tight knit community. Mm. I think we have one stoplight and uh, <laughs> I think there, there might be a little uh, convenience store and a gas station and mm. that's about it in Hopedale. But mm -hmm. grew up in, with a lot of good friends and we all played soccer growing up. And mm. it was a, I was born and raised in that town. Mm -hmm. Never had to move and those are where my roots really started. Wow, and your family's still there? Family's still there. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. Both my parents live in the same house I grew up in. Mm -hmm. They're both retired teachers now. Ah, but okay. uh, they, they have that house. It's the, it's the home base mm -hmm. for the family. Whenever we have holidays and family gatherings, everyone comes back to the same old house. Mm -hmm. so it's pretty great. So you grew up with uh, two other brothers, two you older said? Two brothers, and that's yeah. it? Uh -huh. That's it. Yeah, all right. And how, besides soccer, what else did you like as a child and, and during those childhood years? What did you love doing in Hopedale? It was just in Hopedale especially, the cool thing about the town and where we grew up is I grew up right on a pond. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the epicenter of the town. There was a park and a pond and we have this great nature preserve that goes around the pond called mm -hmm. the Parklands. So growing up, I was an outdoors kind of guy. Mm -hmm. My friends and I would just head outside every day 
and my parents would kick us out of the house and say, go, go find something to do. Uh -huh. So we were either playing basketball or soccer or mm -hmm. going on the lake and going canoeing or kayaking, wow. going on hikes or runs in the woods mm -hmm. and just uh, grew up just being an adventurer mm -hmm. and just having a good time in the, in the town's boundaries and beyond. And uh, I was big into sports and big into art and uh, wow. played a lot of music as well. Uh -huh. I was a, a big time musician growing up played uh -huh. trumpet all through high school and wow. college still playing today uh -huh. picked up guitar along the way and kind of just your tried own to songs right that's right uh -huh. yeah. yeah the science song so it was just a really great environment to grow up in because i had a close group of friends and not only were we close but our parents were close mm -hmm. so it was a nice community we all had very varied interests and we we shared a lot together mm. wow that does sound like that. I, have, I have a very lucky childhood mm -hmm. i really mm -hmm. uh give a lot of credit to my parents and, and the community that I grew up in. I, I'm very fortunate. Mm, and it sounds like it had its impact upon Definitely you did. and the things you've been doing uh, that you have been paying for it in uh, community and, and roots for other uh, individuals as well. Um, so, and that sounds like quite a childhood and involved in the arts as well as uh, sports outside, spending a lot of time outside. Um, and then also getting interested in the academic world and being mm. a teacher along the way. Did that get started for you in your education going on to college after high school? It did. It started with me right from, from my parents. Mm -hmm. They were both teachers. My mom yeah. and dad taught in Milford. Mm -hmm. Mom was kindergarten and dad was mm -hmm. middle school math and also high school technology. Mm -hmm. And I just grew up in that environment mm -hmm. and I knew it was something I, I loved the lifestyle and, and how you could affect people through that mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. and and to be honest I I had a lot of great teachers growing up that had a big influence on me mm -hmm. and as soon and the more and more great teachers I had that impacted mm -hmm. my life I said to myself this is what I want to do mm -hmm. I want to give people the same product and, and the same feelings that I was given mm -hmm. from these great teachers because those are the people that really were a decisive impact on my life mm -hmm. so going to college for education was a no-brainer for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and science I'm a science teacher now and mm -hmm. I absolutely love it it was my favorite subject growing up I'm fascinated with science mm -hmm. and so that's just a, 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 the subject passion that I had going into the whole thing so I went to UMass Amherst for undergrad mm -hmm. and majored in earth system science and yeah. got my teaching license and a minor in education and, and I kept the arts involved and I, mm -hmm. I added a minor in music mm -hmm. and did a lot of did a lot with band and, and music in, in college as well mm -hmm. Wow that uh, sounds like a very full, abundant it was, educational. It was a full plate. Uh huh. But I've never yeah. been someone that can, that can uh, just take things and <laughs> and go after the the minimum amount. I've always been one to grab hold of everything I could get my hands on and mm -hmm. and see where I could take it. Mm -hmm. And uh, hasn't always been easy. I've learned a lot of hard lessons mm -hmm. living that lifestyle mm -hmm. about just taking on too much and mm -hmm. and how to manage my time and balance my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, but. I wouldn't want it any other way. I think mm -hmm. that the best way to learn in life is to experience and maybe fail once in a while and mm -hmm. succeed and then take the best of both and put it into one big concoction of life. So. <laughs> wow, that's well said. Uh, and the sun comes out and again sun, as beautiful. you say this <laughs> about yeah, that. Absolutely. Uh, how about uh, mentors uh, for you uh, uh, that you learned or maybe one of the most valuable things about you've learned from others about teaching? Mm. The most valuable mentor I had in terms of the education world is hands down my band director from college. Mm -hmm. I was in the UMass marching band, mm -hmm. trumpet wow. player, Fun. and a huge trumpet section, 52 wow. trumpets, and the band as a whole had over 350 members. Uh -huh. It was a monster band, yeah. and it was just such a successful program, and it was because of this one guy named George Parks, mm -hmm. and he was our band director, and I, I just, he, he really believed that it wasn't just about the music and about the the academic piece to what you're the organization that you're a part of but it's about the leadership that's involved mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and the teaching not just from the top down but mm -hmm. from within to everyone around you so mm -hmm. he empowered all of us as band members to be leaders to one another to be teachers to one another mm -hmm. and he also ran a summer leadership program for band students mm -hmm. kids that were in marching bands that wanted to add more to their plate in the band world and I just loved hmm. the stuff that he was doing for us in the band and I was like hey I'd like to come on the road with you and help you out in this summer program you have he's like great mm -hmm. 
So I spent a wow. lot of summers with him traveling across the country and wow. working in this leadership program for band students mm -hmm. and learned everything I learned everything that I know about education and teaching through him and, and the way mm -hmm. he taught. Wow, wow, that's a great uh, tribute and a few minutes there. Yeah, he's, he was amazing. Uh, what was one of your favorite moments or memories of that? Yeah, of going across the country, really? Yeah, you know, uh -huh. we traveled with this program in the, mm. in the summer. I mean, just the greatest moments were just that whole environment. It's just mm. such a unique environment okay. to see, yeah. to go to a, all these, all these programs that he ran, these academies were on college campuses and he would bring in hundreds of high school students mm -hmm. from that region of the country. They would stay on the college campus and just to see these kids come in and just leave changed people wow. was amazing. Mm -hmm. And so we had, we had a lot of great memories, the road trips, you know, mm -hmm. we couldn't afford planes. So the staff and I would just road trip around and it was, uh -huh. it was a blast. But uh, the UMass marching bands, provided a, a, so, an amazing array of experience mm -hmm. for me and the band members and my friends. We marched in the 2001 presidential inauguration wow. down in DC uh -huh. with How the exciting. band. We played at halftime of the Canadian Football League Super Bowl wow. one year. Uh, we've been, we played in the Indianapolis Colts Stadium mm -hmm. for the Grand National Marching Band Championships. Wow. So How exciting. We've had a lot of great experiences mm -hmm. through that band and, and the band program in general and that director has Wonder. really done a lot for me. Are you still in touch? He's, He's since passed away, ah, he has. unfortunately, okay. but uh, I, every single day of my life mm. is driven in his memory yeah. and in his honor. I just, mm -hmm. I want to be him. I want to keep doing the work that he did for me and everybody and, and just keep everything going. So well, I keep in touch with him every day. <laughs> yes, well, that's obvious. And from all I hear of others in the community, uh, that carries, you carry that on. Uh, as a legacy and tribute, it sounds like, mm. in what you do. Well, thank you, that means a lot. In your own life. And uh, you have gone on to do teaching and inspire uh, children in Hopkinton, uh, actually in middle, middle school, right? Middle school, uh -huh. yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's a program in the eighth grade, and it's developed very much based on the program that I experienced with George Parks in his mm -hmm. summer academy. And I, mm -hmm. the name of it is the Enjoy Life Leadership Academy. Uh -huh. And it's for the eighth graders in Hopkinton. And they go through a, a leadership training with me. It, it's a it's over 30 hours of leadership education curriculum. Mm -hmm. And it's just a, a really wonderful experience for the students to learn about leadership education, which is not something that's really focused on or taught in schools. Mm -hmm. So we, mm -hmm. we provide a really unique experience and there's, we get the high school kids that went through it as eighth graders to come back and be teachers at it and I run mm. the big group stuff and they run the small group stuff and mm -hmm. there's a lot of mentoring going on and the curriculum is just mm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's high energy. It's it's great. Uh, mm -hmm. our, our tagline is uh, a positively life-changing experience, you know, a program that changes lives and at mm -hmm. the end of it we just get so much positive feedback from the students and the parents and we're just going to keep it going as long as it keeps influencing people. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep mm -hmm. it going. Uh -huh. Oh, that sounds really uh, exciting and important. It's wonderful, for, yeah. Uh, young individuals and on and the I'm, path to school. It is, and I, I, it's. I'm fortunate that there's so much support for it in mm -hmm. Hopkinton. I think that I, I'm just every day wake up, ready to go to work. I think mm -hmm. this is wow. the one. Of, this is the best district I think mm -hmm. any teacher, student, parent could be a part of, mm -hmm. and to go in every day and have the support of the administration and mm -hmm. the other staff and the students and the parents to take a program like this, which is very new mm -hmm. and uh, not something that's well known, not mainstream, it's, it's unique. And, and for them to say, wow, we really want to take this and support it any way we can. That's great. It's, it's really humbling. Mm -hmm. Very, very, ha very lucky to, to be here in Hopkinton. I think mm -hmm. that's a big part of why it was able to gain so much success. Mm -hmm. And not only Hopkinton, but you brought this over to France, right? I did. How did that uh, happen? What? Yeah, that's a great story. We had an exchange student that came, an eighth grade boy, a couple of years ago. And this was, I just returned from a, a leave of absence to get my master's degree. And I came back into the classroom and we had an exchange student and he was from France. Mm -hmm. And the, the host family said, you should get involved in this leadership academy that's happening with the eighth graders. And I also had him as an eighth grade science student. Mm -hmm. So I knew him very well. His name was Tim. Mm -hmm. And he just, he really latched onto wow. it. I mean, it, it uh -huh. really had a big impact on him. So he went back to France, told his dad about it, who's a high school teacher in France actually in Luxembourg oh. and uh, right over the border. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the dad, I got an email after a, a few weeks in the, into the summer and the dad said, I've talked to administration. We want to have you come and teach this leadership 
education curriculum to our students in our schools out here in France and Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to do that? So I went and uh, proposed the, the plan to administration in Hopkinton. And again, I was just blown wow. away with their wow. support of mm -hmm. it. And they said, absolutely, let's, let's do what mm -hmm. we can to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And so I, I took a leave of absence to go overseas and I got to teach our Leadership Academy curriculum to hundreds of students in oh, Luxembourg boy. and France, and uh -huh. that was a, a really cool experience. Yes, I bet, for uh, for the students over there, I'm sure, as well. It was very unique mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. and so they really were blown away by just the fact that we had this a program that did anything like this. Their mm -hmm. education system is a lot different than what we experience here mm -hmm. in the United States, especially in Massachusetts, so mm -hmm. a program like this was really eye-opening and it was was really cool for them wow uh, and uh how, what did you what was one of your uh things you especially liked about being in the french culture over there but uh, what wasn't there what <laughs> what was there not to like uh, everything the food obviously <laughs> was amazing uh -huh. just the i think the thing that blew me away the most was just the sense of community and kindness over there ah. uh and humility I learned so much about humility and I always knew what the word meant to be humble. I knew the definition, but to go there and to see that they truly live a very minimalized lifestyle. It's not extravagant. It's not their lifestyle day to day is, is very simple and mm -hmm. focused and it's focused on the kids and the parents all work for the betterment of the kids the schools it's it's a really supportive environment with a lot of caring individuals mm -hmm. and it's similar to what we have here in hopkinton you know i, I saw a lot of similarities in that yeah. and what i've experienced with this community so that was that was very warming and welcoming to say hey we got something very similar to this in our community but to see it over there in a place where i didn't know what to expect mm -hmm. it was really cool on the idea that it takes a village to raise a child mm -hmm. and and they do it very very well wow well well said and uh, what a good teacher you are I'm learning already from this fast moving along interview of your experiences and now uh, within the interview we were going to make a little time for some soccer teaching absolutely one of the things you do in your work as we began with is being a soccer coach and wondering if you could show uh, a, a little move or a soccer tip perhaps uh, to me at this point. I'd love to. All We're right. going to get you ready for tryouts. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> All right. All right. So I'm going to so. teach you, you'll, you'll be barefoot, so I'm going to yes. teach you mm -hmm. a very basic move. It's called a rollover. Mm -hmm. It's a fun move and it, it gets the your feet moving a little bit. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's a move that you can use to fake out a defender if you're ah, an offensive okay. player. Uh -huh. So all you have to do is dribble up to me. Uh -huh. I'll be. I'm going to demonstrate what I'm going to do to you, and then you can all right. it back to me. All right. I'll you dribble attention. up to me, mm -hmm. and you come up, and then you roll the ball over the bottom of your foot, over the sole oh, of your foot. Ball. Okay. Uh -huh. And I think it's a, a good basic move to teach you. Uh -huh. And we do this little rollover drill, and then you keep dribbling. Wow. Okay. So all right. I'm going to see hmm. how well. You can execute. Okay, what do you want to say to me uh, being my first time? Uh, I paid attention, I think. Anything else? Keep your eye on the ball. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> I think good this, advice. I think for our girls, we, we start training them where we want them to not look at the ball when they're doing these moves. But mm. for you, I think <laughs> stay in control and, and don't try and go at full speed. Just try and get the, the movement down first. Mm -hmm. See if you can really roll that ball over the sole of your foot. <laughs> All See right. See how you do. Uh, then we do this, right? And then that was, right, that was good. my that was pretty go. good. All right, and then you chase after and fake me out, and you're off ah, to the races. Ah, yeah. Okay. You score that, your first goal. Uh huh. All right, nice great. Job. Any? There we go. That was fantastic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, my first soccer lesson and uh, well instructed. And how about for advice for anyone interested in sports? You know, uh, or. You know, for instance, thinking about soccer, uh, what's something in general, some philosophy to, that, to keep in mind and heart about sports? Oh man, this is... You Maybe just, just one? You just tapped into <laughs> my, my soft spot. Yeah, I think our philosophy in the girls' soccer program, and I think the philosophy that all athletes, student athletes, and coaches should take on as they're aspiring in their sports is simply nothing great happens without hard work. There, you, you can't become improved, you can't get to any 
high level in mm -hmm. your specific mm -hmm. sport, and especially soccer, without putting in the practice time. Mm -hmm. uh, what, mm -hmm. And we have a, a saying in, in soccer and in the leadership stuff and in, and in the classroom, mm -hmm. what you put in is what you get out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when people expect things to be there for them and to happen for them without putting the work into it initially, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm then they're going to be disappointed. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you want to be someone that gets a lot out of what you do, you got to put a lot into it mm -hmm. and uh, be realistic with where you are and what you need to improve on. And, and whatever you want to get out of life, you can get out of it, provided you put enough of the work and effort and uh, attitude into that. Mm -hmm. and, and just to stay positive about it. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of student athletes, we see them put a lot of pressure on themselves. We see them uh, enter almost too many structured environments with soccer and other sports where they're playing on four or five different teams with four or five different coaches and at the end of the day we play sports because we love to play sports we love that specific game that we're a part of and and so keep it simple and keep it positive and keep it fun and as soon as it starts to lose its fun because it's you're you're over structured or, or whatnot then you're not going to want to improve you're not going to want to put the work in so you got to keep it fun, stay positive, and then expect great things only if you're willing to put great things into it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, that is interesting and important, and I see how all of your experience and your influence of family and mentor weaves together there in what you are able to uh, provide through teaching and coaching and leadership training, uh, kind of the same themes, the emphasis on uh, being kind to one another and the importance of hard work uh, and uh, having fun and keeping perspective on it, the, all very valuable life experience advice as well as in school and uh, competition in sports and uh, all of those other things. Um, so how about in our last few minutes, uh, what about something good we don't know about you already <laughs> or something interesting? Uh, that you have to share? Anything else that uh, people at Hopkins didn't know that you might like to uh, share for a minute or two? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, there's I think more. A lot of the, I think a lot of the cool <laughs> stuff is, you know, dates back to just the music side of my life and okay. the art side of my life. I, I've always been someone that is really supportive of the arts mm -hmm. and of giving children the full scope of, of an education, of, uh, of every facet of life, mm -hmm. and so I've uh, I've done a lot of cool stuff with with trumpet. That playing an instrument has brought me to a lot of cool places, like I talked about earlier with mm -hmm. joining the marching right. band and and that sort of thing. Um, other cool facts about my life. Let's see. I'm in love with the state of Maine. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> I I grew up kind of there in the summers. My parents were both teachers, as I discussed, mm -hmm. and they have a they have a small like two room cabin mm -hmm. on the coast of way upstate Maine. Oh, uh -huh. And uh, I used to go there every summer. They'd say, okay, school's out. We're all done for the summer. Let's mm -hmm. go and hang out at our little cabin in the woods. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's right on the ocean. Uh, so we used uh -huh. to just go and I had a lot of good friends up there. I love to ski. Mm -hmm. I could, I think my happiest place other than the soccer pitch is the top of the ski mountain. Wow. So uh -huh. what people don't know about me is all winter, I, I get out of school on a Friday and if I, I try and keep every single weekend open and I drive right up to the mountains mm -hmm. and I hit the slopes in and, Maine. and in Maine uh -huh. or New Hampshire but yeah. a lot of the a lot of times in Maine I have my oldest brother who lives there uh -huh. yeah. and so it's free lodging ah, very <laughs> to have good. him That's living important there for very the important for the ski uh -huh. culture yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah I just absolutely love love it mm -hmm. and winter is actually my favorite season it is, and yeah, I, yeah. I get a lot of weird looks when when it's 90 degrees mm -hmm. out and sunny and people are, are all around me saying, oh, if it could just be like this all year. Mm -hmm. And I look at them mm -hmm. and I say, wow, I wish there were six inches of snow <laughs> on the ground right now. And they just, they get a lot uh -huh. of strange looks. And, yeah. but yeah, well, I really love winter. That's, I think that's helpful to have that uh, type of a perspective when we're all dealing in the thick of winter. And Absolutely. Getting, oh, that snow so good. I urge everyone to get a winter activity. I think that makes it a, an easier time to manage. A winter activity. Winter, okay. winter activity. Uh -huh. Get, gets us through the tough times. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. All right, how about this for you? Um, what do you have on your bucket list? You know, you've covered quite a bit already oh, man. in your life, but what do, you, what do you think? I actually have a written list. You do? At my house. Huh. When did you create that? Oh, it's been an ongoing, okay. living, breathing document for mm -hmm. a few years now. Mm -hmm. And 
still on my bucket list. Uh, I've written a book and I oh, getting uh -huh. that published would be yeah. on the bucket list, but there's so much that is entailed in that that I didn't really know about originally. Mm. So uh -huh, I think yeah. it'll be a couple of years, maybe hopefully sooner, but getting a book published would be yeah. awesome. Okay. And the book I was working on is a leadership book for students. Oh, great. So uh -huh. we got the content and now it's just about the finishing touches. Mm. I think it's going to take more time than I thought, but mm -hmm. it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, best wish is getting that out. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that that that's will be, that's, a, that's on the bucket list. Mm -hmm. Uh, skiing in the out west is on the bucket okay. list. I've uh -huh. never been, I've only been east coast skier uh -huh. and I'd like to get out there. At some point in my life I, I have aspirations to get a doctorate mm -hmm. okay. and keep doing some, some really cool research in the world of adolescent development and leadership uh -huh. and those are two areas of passion for me which bode well for being a teacher and a coach and, and running leadership academies uh, and I, I just I love education, not just giving it, but mm. also receiving well, it. Well, obviously. So I, I, that's on the bucket yeah. list and... Uh, well, that's quite a bucket list. Here's one more that, question that's, as we Those end. are the big ones, yeah. Uh, what is your wish for the world and our generations now uh, to come? Mm. Wish for the world. I think it's that people find their passion area mm -hmm. and go after it. Mm -hmm. I think there's a great quote that I love mm -hmm. that says, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do that mm -hmm. because what the world needs is more people to come alive. Awesome. And I really see in, in teaching and coaching, I see students and I just, I hope that they realize that the, the way that they can contribute best to the world and society is just to find what they love to do, their passion area, mm -hmm. and do what makes them happy and go after it mm -hmm. with everything they have and good things. They'll live a satisfied, fulfilled life and they'll most greatly impact the world. That's great advice. And thank you so much. We are now out of time. And thank you I think for having Mike me. Turned us this off. Has been a, this has been a blast. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peralt, host of the program Meet Your Neighbor on HCAM TV. This show introduces you to Hopkinton residents, the many interesting people who are our neighbors, and we invite them to share stories, experiences, insights, and observations from their lives. We'd like to hear who you think should be interviewed on our program. So if you know someone that Hopkinton should get to know more about, please email me.